And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me I have a newcomer to the temple, creator of Neon Lords in the Toxic of the Toxic Wasteland, the retro clone that is eighty that is so that is so eighties, you're probably gro you're probably growing a mohawk listening to this. A radio because it's radioactive. The one and only Brian Shutter. How are you doing today, man? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I'm do I'm doing good. Um um, wi I'm wishing for colder wet. I'm wishing for colder weather because it's still not cold enough over here. Oh, it's like uh, in the twenties here. It's pretty cold. I'm not feeling it. No, no. As far as far as I'm concerned, it doesn't start getting cold until we get single digits. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Yeah, I can. It's. I don't know. The twenties is pretty rough sometimes. I feel like, especially with the wind, it goes right through you. Oh, you're you're in. You're on the you're on the co you're on the coast, so there's that. So there's certainly that. Um, yeah, that's true. For me, it's a a, a case of. Um, I'm in Minnesota, so. Oh it, so yeah. The only, so um, when it so I'm just waiting until January comes along because then it's gonna start getting real ugly. Yeah, January is always the worst. It's literally the worst month. Mm -hmm. it's, it's also national. It's also the month with National Hangover Day. I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> Definitely not. So, it's a bit of a tradition to start with the humble beginnings, as it were. Yes. So. What got you into role playing games, and what was it that made it stick for you? So I got into role playing games off of Hero Quest. Not really like the game itself, but the commercial for Hero Quest. Like, okay. Did you ever hear? You ever play that game? I've played the game, but as far as that particular commercial, I never saw it. Oh, it was it was amazing. But yeah, so then I got it for Christmas that year had no idea how to play it i was in like sixth grade mm -hmm. or fourth grade or something so just that high fantasy idea with miniatures really stuck and then uh magic the gathering came out mm -hmm. like when i was at seventh grade so um that stuck pretty hard and then around that time you know like magic's the gateway gateway drug game and we got we got some uh second edition D D books Mm -hmm. Well, actually, not even books. We got the um, the starter set that came with the CD that taught you how to play. I um, never, I never got this. I never got the CD. I only had, I only had the um, core, I only had the core books. Oh, uh, you can um, actually somebody ripped the the CD on the YouTube. You can listen like, to it. Che cheesiness. When I think, when I think, of, when I think of some sort of C some sort of CD or the or the like, when it comes to teaching people to play AD and D, I always think. of infamous dragon strike yeah yeah it's 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 kind of like that Which, i may um i may drag some of the people in the temple to watch and just so just so i can enjoy their pain at the amount of g at the amount of um low budget cheese because look i i like eric the barbarian i like me i like me some cheap some cheesy ass fantasy yeah for sure but yeah, so and then um, I kind of fell out of D and D for a, a while because you know high school mm -hmm. nobody nobody like wants to be the guy playing D and D in high school. So and then got back into it really with uh, well before, like fifth edition. Mm -hmm. Got back in, into it because everyone wanted to learn how to play, and I was like, well, I mean, I know how to play, so. I got fifth edition, then I've just been playing that ever since, and then got tired of fifth edition. So then I was like, "Well, I think I'll just like make my own rules in game," and then just kind of went from there. Mm -hmm. Um. Now what? Now, given that background, what was the reasoning you chose to build on the BX rules? Hmm, that's a good question. Um, I don't know. I just. 
really didn't like fifth edition and I, I like the, I really got into the OSR movement. Mm-hmm. Like that really resonated, like just the, the, the eighties vibe of it all. And I, f- I just, I just love it. And so I figured I might as well just jump in on it too. Mm-hmm. Uh, given, given that you're doing, um, a bit, a bit of a post-apocalypse approach, um, I think that I think that was the right call because BX could be could be infamous um for it for its lethality. Yes. Um I obviously not as not as lethal as some other games. Looking at you war looking at you um first edition Warhammer. <laughs> um or or um or Rollmaster for that matter with its chart upon chart of showing just how gruesome your injuries are. Yeah, but when it com- when it comes to when it when it comes the thing is the thing is with something like OSR is that a lot of people make the mistake in my, in my opinion that um that there's a one size fits all approach to o- to a lot of the OSR stuff when there really isn't some of right. it is retro clones of BX some of it is retro clones of um, Beck Me. Some re- some are retro clones of adv- of advanced second and so on. Yeah. Um, some going all the way back to white box like um, Swords and Wizardry does. Mm-hmm. But with that in mind, you're going for a post apocalypse that is trying to be as cheesy '80s and early '90s as possible. Was that just a case of product of your environment, or what was what was the inspiration to go that route? Yeah, it was definitely product of my environment. I definitely like love everything, '80s, early '90s. So I just pretty much wrote what I liked. I wrote the game for me, yeah. And then it just whatever I liked, I I throw into it, and it just seems to have ga- gathered quite the uh, following. I'm really surprised by. Mm-hmm. Um, the when I looked at the art and I looked at the descriptions for a lot of things, there were two. Th- there were two things that um ca- that came to mind f- that came to mind for me, and I'm curious if these were inspirations at all for you. Now I'll go with the obvious one first, Mad Max. Yes. Like I said, like I said, obvious. Yeah. <laughs> the other one, um, just because just because of some of the darker humor within it, um, a two way tie between heavy metal, as in as in the mag as in the magazine. Yeah. And 2000 AD. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Yes, all of that is true. And a lot of, like, um, 80s Games Workshop. That well, ties in with the 2000 AD and the Dread, I think, too. Well, game, well Games Workshop did make, a, um, dr- did make a Dread game in the, in the early days. They do. I have it. I love it. Um, there was also the, the result... Although there's also because of that the um, complicated situation that there's supposed to be a fifth chaos god, but they can't use it. Hmm, interesting. Um, Ma- the fifth chaos god is supposed to be Malice, who is the who is the um, anti chaos god. It's a, I'm simplifying it, but the reason they can't use it is because that's John Wagner's IP. Mm. I can't remember if it was Wagner or one of the, or one of the other writers for uh, to, for for um Dread and some of the other 2000 AD stuff. Um, of course, it's also point. It's also important to note that Malice came around in the er, in the early days of forty of um War uh, Warhammer, where it hadn't really established its own individual identity yet. It was kind of still a parody of other people's stuff. Yeah, like the Rogue Trader mm-hmm. days. Yeah. Yeah, Rogue Trader mm-hmm. and early days of um, Warhammer Fantasy Battle. Mm-hmm. Um, and although although when I looked at the paragraph saying crack open some tab, I have a confession to make. I've never had yeah. a tab. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite disgusting. I've I've had it. I haven't. I mean, they re-released it. I had the re-release, I remember, and it's not good. But like, it's actually a that's actually a reference to Ready Player One mm-hmm. when Wait. the guy talks 
like he talks about like try or like Sorrento talks to Wade about um like being cool, like just when he's done for the day, he sits back, crack open some tab, and I think he plays like Robotron or something. Yeah. So like um, I mean, I had to reference the greatest book ever written. Um, yeah, I can I can under I can see that now. I have I haven't um I haven't read Ready Ready Player One, and I didn't I didn't see the movie, um so I can't so I wasn't able to comment on that. Uh, um, you, yeah, you should for sure read the book. There, it's amazing. Yeah. When it comes, when it, and I think the other problem is there. Maybe it, maybe it was, maybe I just wasn't born early enough. But Tab was never in any store or any um, and any conven any convenience store in uh, my area. Yeah, I mean, I know it's like it was marketed as like a diet soda. So as like a kid, I never really was interested in it. But it's, it has such a connotation with the '80s that like. That's literally the only soda you could say at that point that would like drive the message home. I would think. Yeah. Um. And when it now, would you say would you say that Neon Lords leans more into retro retro futurism or post apocalypse? So yeah, more retro futurism. We it's actually uh, a term that I came across called cassette futurism. Yeah, so I think, I think I've heard of that. Yeah. It's like, it's essentially, you know, like eighties technology, but it can do like way better things. Like it's like, if the technology stayed like tapes and like beta max and all that, but then like advanced still using tapes. It, yeah. It's like cassette futurism. So we ter co coined the term post-apocalyptic cassette futurism. Is how we uh, explain the game a little bit. Yeah, I can de I can definitely make I can definitely make sense out of that. And um, it's it's one of it's one of those things that I think that I think people um, I think it really started to come into its own when people st when people looked at the quote unquote future tech in um o in older works. And I'm not just talking about uh, works from the '80s, but say but say the tv watch from dick tracy <laughs> yeah yeah exactly um, yeah it... or or, so, or some of the or some of the other um some of the other dumb bits of technology from 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 from, from that golden age of animation um, yeah like the kind of like jetsons yeah um and of i do have to ask this in the text mm. is Every instance of rules written with a Z. No, no, that was just for that was just for like the the joke of the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. I actually uh, went on a forum somewhere, and then I, I saw people talking shit about the Z, so I had to like set them straight. <laughs> it's as funny as you bring that up, but yeah, no, it's just a joke. The That's the actual. I figured it. I figured it was because the whole thing is is the whole thing is presented very tongue in cheek. Yeah. Now, when it come now, um, one of the things I'm one of the things I'm curious about is the introduction of of a hairstyle as a part of character creation. Yes. Now, was that one of those tongue in cheek things, or does that have a mechan a mechanical consequence? No. Well, yeah. Every every hairstyle has. A mechanical consequence. So let me, uh, I can pull up the hairstyles real quick. Mm -hmm. Yes, one second. I know, like, in the um, play test, there's only like 12 or something, but I know, like, in the actual game, it's like, so we're up to 20. 20, oh, I went too far. Up to about 20 hair. Okay. So, like, the mullet, mm -hmm. for example, uh, you get an additional plus one to your attitude. And if you name your mullet and talk about it, it grants you an additional plus one to your attitude. So I'm now I'm guessing that because of this that that um the stand while there's probably going to be six ability scores, they're not written the same way as they would be in BX. No, so the ability scores are burliness, prowess, endurance, attitude, uh, brains, and sleaze. Sleaze is like an additional one, 
we added specifically for the game, and then um, there's no wisdom. So brains just does everything wisdom and intelligence would do. What was the reasoning you guys had for combining um, wisdom and intelligence into one role like that? Because wisdom's stupid. No, I'm <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. It's just because, I don't know. I, it's essentially the same thing, realistically. Like, I get it. Like, well, intelligence would be more book smart. Wisdom would be more like, like worldly mm -hmm. um, advice, I guess. Worldly, like gaining knowledge through experience rather than books i yeah. would put it but i mean realistically brains gets it we're not really that like overly into it i just brain sounded good yeah i got you now when it comes to the when it comes to the classes um mm -hmm. now sometimes i've seen i've seen i've seen people's um ha i've seen people's osr hacks that 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 um that have classes that are re that are reskins of existing BX classes. I'm guessing you guys aren't falling into that trap. That each of these, while there might be some analogs that they could make with one of with a fantasy class, it doesn't quite compare. Right. Yeah. There's like you're exactly right. Like the Deathbringer obviously is like a fighter, but like he does more than just that. And then, like a war wizard is a magic user, but he he like makes a pact with a, a demon lord, and that's how he gains his magic. Mm -hmm. And it's just like all like forty k like chaos, evil magic. There's like nothing good about magic. And I'm get I'm guess given given that you brought up um forty k, um do you have do you have any, do you have um any sort of equivalent to perils of the warp? Yes, actually. So there is a, a, a class called the Star Spawn. Mm -hmm. They're like a, uh, a psychic race of aliens. And then um, they actually have a Perils of the Warp um, effect that happens to them. Uh, I'd have to pull it up. But like I know if they roll, I think they roll doubles. or like the same number. Like um, on D sixes, they take damage, or like thirteen. I think they're afraid of the number thirteen. Mm -hmm. So every time they roll a thirteen, they take damage. And with that kind, with that kind of thing in mind, um, you have now you have um, you've already you've already got a few casting classes. Um, Ho Holy Sm Holy Smiter, um, yep. um, Star Star Spawn, um, mm -hmm. Skull. Um, Skull Jammer and War Wizard. Now, yep. given that you mentioned that Star Spawns are psychics, how how um similar or different is psychic going to be from um regular spell casting? So, uh, the War Wizard primarily casts destructive magic, where mm -hmm. like he's melting faces and like shits exploding and everything, mm -hmm. and then um the Star Spawn does more uh, mental domination and like breaking will of like his opponents rather than just straight up killing them. Yeah. And I know that the skull jammer is descri as described as basically a, um, well, if you don't mind me making the shadow run reference at Decker. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So his spells like in air quotes are, are hacks. So he hacks like the, uh, the computer waves that run mm -hmm. through the dungeons, like arbitrary science that like, I don't have to explain because it's fantasy. And then, um, yeah, so that's pretty like, so he's more like, like uh, tangible mul manipulation of things that are happening. Mm -hmm. And then like uh, mind trickery, like hollow casting himself or like shooting lasers out of like uh, a tape deck and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Like just ridiculous things that realistically would never be able to happen. Now, when it comes to something like the Holy Smiter, um, would it be fair to say that it's got more in common with the cleric or the paladin, or is it a little of both? It's a little of both with some space marine ideology thrown in. And get and um, given that given that um. I'm trying. Trying to. Th would they have? Would they? 
Well, they already have they have prayers as list as listed on the um, page, but yep. is it a, a lot of times in these sort of games when it comes to prayers, it's a case of where where um they'd have to do the ritual um each mo each morning or at the start of each session um in order to get their particular in order to get their particular um spells. Is it a similar manner with when it comes to holy smiters? Yeah, so every day at the beginning or at the end of a long rest, each um except for well so the Brutacorn he can cast spells, but he only has like class specific like four spells or something. So he doesn't count, but like any other user, except for the um, Skull Jammer too, they gather what's called their spell pool. Mm -hmm. Like you roll a certain amount of D6s, and then like every six that co pops up, that's how many spells you can cast. So that's like represented by like, um, like you know, the um, Holy Smiter praying to Lord Randy or whoever his god is, and how many like um, prayers he's allotted for the day. Yep. And I know we joked about Lord Ran Lord Randy um, er early on, but what would be a few other um, god examples in the pa in the um, pantheon? So, in the pantheon, we have Lord Randy, of course, is uh, the savage one. He's the um, the king of the gods, and then uh, he was uh, awarded mankind's greatest award, the uh, heavyweight championship belt. <laughs> So it, it, he uh, he obtained godhood through the the championship belt, and then um, Dawnstar, which is a uh, a satellite that orbits Earth that people pray to, and then we have Cthulhu because the because um, uh, Cthulhu fell in the public domain and anybody can use it, so why the hell not? Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have the Golden Goddess, which is the Queen of Chaos, and it's essentially the Golden Girls. Uh, made into a hydra. It's kind of like a mix of um, Tiamat and the Golden Girls. That is a that is a horrifying combination. <laughs> and then like um, there's other uh, there's a couple other ones, but I'm not going to spoil it for people. There's some pretty juicy stuff in there. And when now when it comes to the um co the cosmic barbarian for uh, mm -hmm. for instance yeah would that would their partic would their particular setup be co be um how similar or different would it be to the um traditional barbarian so they do uh rage but um they rage by snorting ground up cosmic dust from a comet that they've learned to do through um, years of training so that's how they rage out and then um, they they only they dual wield they're the only class to be able to dual wield melee weapons uh, in the beginning because they have like realistically no skill and like no trained combat skills they just pretty much hit things with two weapons and hopefully something sticks and then so they snort their snort their um, rock and then go ham and then beat them up. Mm -hmm. It's pretty much the gist. Um, I could make the joke that they're they're less like Conan and more like Scarface. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Mm -hmm. um, now, when it comes to when it comes to um cyber skin when it comes to the cyber skin idea of a bioengineered clone of Ray of Reagan, um, yes. I just I just have to ask, what the hell was the idea with doing that? So I mean, if you think about it, like during the Cold War, there had to have been some like insane ideas going on in the White House, right? Like mm -hmm. I mean, cocaine was very prevalent at the time. So somebody had to come up with an idea of cloning the president in like a worst case scenario, Russia drops the bomb and we don't have a president. Well, they got a, about a million of them in, in, uh, in vats. So cyber skins are essentially my answer to, um, uh, what are they called in 40 K the tomb, tomb Kings there, the, uh, mm -hmm. I can't remember what they're called off the top of my head. But the uh, the tomb kings. Yeah, they're like the they're like the robots 
Necrons. The Necrons. Necrons. Yeah, so it's essentially Necrons mixed with cloning technology with Ronald Reagan's face. Which, um... It would probably it would probably be very amusing and ver and very insane for an in for to have an in to have a party with two cyber skins because they're gonna look alike. That is true. That yeah. is true. They all look exactly like Reagan, unless like you you know have a mohawk or a mullet. Dear God, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially when they start taking battle damage and then their grip on humanity starts losing and then they can't tell the difference between friend and foe. Mm -hmm. And they just start attacking all nimbly bimbly like. Yeah. And when it, now when it comes to the, when it comes to the death bring, when it comes to the um, death bringer, um, is it a case where they'd be, they'd be more inclined to using um, two handed weapons? Yeah. So, I, f I kind of feel bad for the poor Deathbringer. It was the first class I ever made. So, like, they kind of got the real sh short end of the stick. So I've been kind of, like, going back and and kind of giving them a little lolly here and there. But, yeah, they refuse to use any um, missile weapons. Like, no bows and arrows, no rifles, nothing. Because, you know, they want the, the glory of the slaughter up close and personal. So they stick to two-handed weapons or, like, a sword and a shield. But they do crit, or to the max, as we call it, like um, on a 19 or a 20, like off the rip, like level one. And then I know like they, I don't know if it's in this play test, but I know like they have a, an ability to where any uh, one, hit point, or one hit dice monsters, they can just keep like attacking them like if they kill one they could move to the next one and then so forth mm -hmm. so they're more of like a um like a like a crowd control rather than where the cosmic barbarians more of a a hard hitter for like the the, the bigger baddies all right i got i gotcha um now when it comes now when it comes to dwarfling was that mm -hmm. was that meant to be just a literal combination of dwarf and halfling mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, wizard or like uh, TSR got sued over Hobbit, and then like um, dwarves are done to death, and then hobbits are cool or uh, halflings are cool. So I was like, I'll just you know like combine them, and then they and they're just uh, squats from 40k. Yeah. On one hand, I could. On one hand, I can definitely see that. On the other hand, um. I have a soft spot for Warhammer Dwarves. <laughs> Why? It's very simple. The Book of Grudges. Yeah. <laughs> that and the that and um you've probably seen the Warhammer Quest video that that involves dwarven diplomacy towards elves. Yeah. I.e. Ins i.e. insulting an elf for 2 minutes straight. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a very, which is a very um, restrained response. The typical, <laughs> the typical response would usually be that would usually be an axe to someone's face. Yeah, pretty much. And with the, now, I already we already discussed the um, ho the holy smiter, and given the given the inspirations that you mentioned with that. Um, would they be seen using hammers more often than not? Yeah, so that's they they stick to the traditional uh, no pointy weapons rule. Mm -hmm. like, it's, I mean, for lack of a better term, that's you know like hammers and anything blunt, right? I think that's like how it's referred to. Yeah, yeah, they can only use blunt weapons. Like that's that rule stuck because that, that's ridiculous. Also, it's, also, um, when it comes when it comes to that kind of rule, I remember somebody asking me about that once, and I ended up quoting um, Shepard Book from Firefly when it came to it. It's quite specific. It is, however, somewhat fuzzy on the subject of kneecaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sums it up pretty well. And when it comes. 
when it comes to hang on now when it comes to the night stalker was that was that put in there just so you could get the 80s understanding of ninja in the book uh yeah so night stalker um yeah is the total ninja turtles ninja 80s 90s ridiculousness plus it's the thief class like they can they utilize pretty much everything in the bx book that a thief does like with the disarm traps hear noises climb sheer walls and then i added like a shadow strike one because like who doesn't like a, a ability called shadow strike and when it comes to when it comes to the um, when it comes to that shadow strike, is that similar to um, sneak attack, or does it have some quirks? Um, yeah, actually, it is similar to sneak attack with some quirks added to it. Uh, I would have to pull it up to really remember it off the top of my head. It's like a billion things, but I know like. Night Stalkers are obsessed with Chuck Norris, and they all have, like, feathered bangs and mustaches. <laughs> now, when it, when it comes to the... Um, now, we already talked a bit about the um, Star Spawn and the War Wizard. And I'm not going to go into the secret class, because, it's that, because that's going to be... One, that's one of those things that is... Again, that, that I don't want to, I don't want to um, spoil the fun. But yeah, what what are we? T well, when it comes to the level range for the for the um, classes, how far are we going? Are we? Is this going to be first to tenth level? Are you going one? Are you going first to fifth? Um, are you going all the way up to sixteenth? How is it going to go? Um, just ten, first to ten, and then um, at fifth level, they gain. Um, more abilities and, pr and more notor notoriety because like any adventurer that makes it to fifth level that's like a monument a monumental ability on itself let alone tenth level so they get a little perk at fifth oh now when it comes to what can ex what can one expect when it comes to those perks so the Fifth level perks. Um, generally, I know like the the poor Deathbringer. He gets an additional attack, but I I added like adding like a bunch to the fifth the fifth level stuff. So uh, the Deathbringer gains action hero status, which gives him more attitude. And then um, you'll notice uh, toys being made of your likeness popping up everywhere. Mm. And then, um, yeah, he makes the two attacks. And then his meat, meat NATO ability, that's the one where he can hit the one um, hit dice monsters, jumps mm. to uh, two hit dice monsters. All right, I got you. And when it, co when it comes to... Now, when, now when you had mentioned... On the uh, page that it was built on the B the core BX rules, it there were a couple things that I that I was curious about. One is ability class points, and the other is fortune points. What can you tell me about those? So, yep. So, um, Dungeon Crawl Classics has their luck luck points, and um, I like that idea to where like you could have like a pool of points that you can add. And then spell burn too. They do. They have their nice little spell burn, to where you can add points to make things different. So I figured, why not give every class a class specific pool of points that they can use towards using rad abilities that the class can do, or towards like roles that are specific to that class, and then a pool of points that they can spend any way they see see fit, other than um, meddling with other people's roles and to avoid a, um, a death saving throw. I think that's pretty much the stipulations on the fortune points. And then fortune, like ability class points you regain at a long rest to where like, obviously like you can just keep using them, you know, because that's your profession is being a 
a Deathbringer. Mm -hmm. But the fortune points, once you're done, you don't you don't gain them by um, just rest. You have to like obviously like through other means get more fortune points back. Yeah. And with with that kind of with that kind of thing in in mind. Now, there's been plenty. There's plenty of um. There's been plenty of approaches when it comes to when it comes to criticals or to the max, as you said, it's called in your case. Mm -hmm. Um. But usually, when it comes to D twenty based systems, they they tend to fall into one of two camps. Either column A double damage or column B max damage. Where do you right. fall into that? So every to the max goes to a class specific table and you roll another D20 and then there's a little description on the grizzly um, um, ability that you, or like attack that you do or like you gain a special ability for the next turn or something like it's all like class specific and there's some ridiculous things on there. Now, when it comes to when it comes to those class specific tables, is it a case where um, each of them will have some sort each of them will have some sort of additional effect with with um, criticals? Sometimes, I yeah. I know it's called it just, to the max in your game, but um, it's a force of habit for me. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got you. Yeah, it's same for me. I still call them critical hits, but yeah. So like, yeah, to the max is our critical, and then fumble. It's a total bummer. But yeah, so like, um, and then we have a spell misfire. So if you miss, if you roll a one on your um, either your two hit with a spell or your spell check, then you go to the spell misfire, and those are just spell fumbles. And then yeah, each class. So like the war wizard, mm -hmm. like um, so for instance, let's say you critted with a war wizard, right? And then you roll on the twenty. And you roll, uh, I don't know, let's go 12, right? So you roll a 12, and it's called Sorcerer Supreme. Mm -hmm. And then it's like essentially time and space unravel as you begin to cast a spell. The spell, last spell you cast before this one manifests in the opposite hand. And so you're casting the spell you cast, and then the last spell you cast in the other hand. And so you're dealing that double damage with a little bit of like, um, like role-playing flair added to it. Yeah, I can get... I can get that. What would be a few? What would be a few exa What would be a few examples in some of the more martial classes when it comes to their effects when they go when they go to the max? So the best I'm going to tell you right now is the Deathbringer. He rolls that double twenty. He hits twenty again. It's called Lord Randy's Judgment. And then um, you pretty much like um foes groveling at your feet for forgiveness you look to the heavens and ask what would lord randy do the clouds part lord randy himself is revealed standing with his arms crossed looking back at you and then he puts uh, an extended thumbs down and you know the answer so you look back at your foe put your foot on their feeble shoulder and then you have to spout a cheesy line from a 90s action movie as you lodge your weapon into their skull killing them immediately <laughs> Which, um, give, given the pe given the people doing doing some of the playtesting, I'm pretty sure there's been a few whoppers when it comes to lines. Oh yeah, yeah. That's like that's the best. Like, see, meta meta gaming is like a fine line. Sometimes, like, I like it, but we're so over the top and ridiculous that fourth wall breaks in meta gaming are. I'm okay with it when it comes to this game. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's that far out of the way to shout to to shout a cheesy '90s action line. Um, look, we've all we've all we've all made Monty Python references in one form or another, or in one case, I've got a, I've got a guy who will make a, who will make no shortage of Simpsons references. So yeah, I say exactly. lean into it. Yeah, like might as well, right? Like mm -hmm. it's a game that's heavily influenced by the 80s 90s you, you might as well and now of course if if the game is trying to be ser if the game is trying to be serious then obviously dial that back but if the game's not trying to be serious and everyone and everyone there is meant to be doing beer and pretzels yeah exactly 
Yeah, that's ever since I started playing. Like I've never, never done a serious D and D game because it's a game. You're supposed to have fun. Like, what's the point? Like, I mean, this is not for me. Mm-hmm. Like, I know other people have their ways of doing like D and D and role playing and stuff. Like, I'm all about hack and slash, kick in the door, kill the monster, take the gold, save the babes. Right? Yeah. Like, that's that's like w- what like. The, you know the 80s and 90s rpg for me was and that's why i like to bring to the table yeah now i given the fact that we've mentioned that some that some of the classes within this are going to be casting classes um i'm curious how i'm curious how how similar the setup is going is it going to be is it going to be very is it still going to be using the Van, the vancian model of the of the whole spells per day having to prepare them and then having to take a full rest in order to get those slots back or do you have your own little quirks that you're adding to it no so like like we were saying earlier about the spell pool Mm -hmm. so like a war wizard like he like i don't know what a war wizard would do like he cuts he cuts his hand right and like drips blood Mm -hmm. onto the floor or like has like um what do they do like intestine intestine reading Mm -hmm. or whatever like that like uh Something, you know, he does some ridiculous like ritual in the morning and he rolls a set of dice, six six sided dice based on his level um, and his brain's uh, modifier. So let's say he gets, how many six sided dice do I have right here? He gets one, two, three, four, five, six dice, right? Mm-hmm. So he takes 66 every morning and rolls them. And then. So a war wizard gets a spell at a uh, four, five, or six, like a four up. Mm-hmm. So I got like three. So I can cast three spells for the day. And then that's it. But then like if you roll three sixes out of that, that's called the devil's crit. And you get max spells for the day, which happens like a lot in play testing. Like here, like mm-hmm. the guy who plays my war wizard for me, he, he gets the devil's crit a lot. And then he just, he just goes crazy and casts all the time. Now, given that war wizards make packs with um demon Lords. Yep. Is there, is, is, is there um spell list universal or is it tied to whichever demon Lord they made a pact with? So yes, both. So there's 20 demon Lords that you can, uh, that you randomly get linked up with. Because, like, I mean, you know, like a war wizard, he's trying to, like, obtain, like, you know, like, all this great, like, celestial cosmic power, right? Mm -hmm. So then he, like, does the ritual, like, prays to the demon, and then randomly whatever demon lord comes to him. So he gets the, uh, I think, three first level universal spells at random out of the first level war wizard spells. And then he gets a demon lord specific spell. And so, yep. when it comes uh, to the sp- demon lord specific spells, are they more powerful than universal ones? Uh yeah, they tend to be a bit more. Um, so I would, I would, I would place them. So if I had to put a level on them, I would definitely put them in a fourth to fifth level spell spot. Generally, that's mm-hmm. where they would be. Uh, all right, I gotcha. Now, when it comes now, when it comes to the um, when it comes to the mo- when it comes to the uh, monsters, I know the menacer and zombie are are mentioned, but what are some of the crazy entries that one could expect from the monster entry within this? Because Obviously, obviously, if the classes are going to be their own level of batshit crazy, then the oh. monsters have to follow suit. Yes. So there's the Druid Man, who's just a giant Kool Aid Man who busts through the doors with acidic um, Kool Aid inside of him. Then there's like a uh, like Mary McCheese from McDonald's. Mm-hmm. There's, they're called Meat Titans, but they look like Mary McCheese. Um, I mean, we got all that stuff, and then we got combat amphibians, which are battle toads. But obviously, battle toads is like trademark, so you can't use that. 
Um, yeah, Druid Man. We got Hobos with Shotguns, Laser Caveman, Maul Maggots, Mutant Death Troopers, Rabid Ralphs, Rip Claws, Scum Lords, Scuzz Buckets, Blood Sludges, Pizza Sludges, Cannibalistic Space Worms, Suicide Machines, a guy named uh, Super Soaker, which is just, he literally has a squirt gun filled with, um, Drug laced water, he shoots at people's eyes. Turbinator cops, wasteoids, mm -hmm. just a bunch of ridiculous things. There's a small part of me that that would that um, well, if I end up running it, if it's if it's not in the book, I would try I would try and find an excuse to have a to have an annoying encounter with say a gnome who talks as fast as the micro machines guy. Yeah, good thing you just. Yeah, because that's going in the book right now. <laughs> hey, um, I I mm. aim to please. Yeah, I'm typing it as we speak. <laughs> um, I think if you're gonna type that app appropriately, instead instead of if, when writing the when writing the paragraph of his quote or his description or whatever, um, mm -hmm. write it as if it's as if it's one as if it's one long word all at once. Yeah, I was just thinking that. You know, to re to replicate the fact that he that he talks ridiculously fast. Yeah, yeah, and just have it all one giant like like clump of words all mm -hmm. like matched together. Yeah, that's hilarious. Just people get so mad. Yeah, but it's, yeah, but it fit it fits the joke. No, I know that's what that's why I love it. Mm -hmm. Like, they they're either gonna love it or they're gonna hate it. Which and that's. Are you truly a DM if you don't fuck with your players at every now and again? Oh yeah, this like it's it's very it's very uncommon to not have a TPK. Like it's it's been pretty rough sometimes. But obviously mm -hmm. like that comes a lot down to the player too though. Like just a lot of times in the playtest they're just dumb and they do stupid shit and then they die and then they get upset, but it's like well, you that's your fault. Um, I think some. I do think some players are, are um, need to need to learn that not all games are created equal. Um, exactly, and not all and not all um, encounters are balanced. No, I um, I I'm fifty fifty on the on the whole question about whether or not encounters should be balanced. I'd ar I'd argue that there should that there's room for both. Um. But when now when it comes to the when it comes to the adventures that you have in that you have in the book, are those set up as like one shots or are they set up like um like longer adventures? So yeah, so I kind of came with the idea of it being like a Saturday morning cartoon to where it's real it's more episodic, but it's the same character. So like there's so you can like go and like do the last po outposts on the left mm -hmm. and then like like the president's involved and all that stuff and like you're saving saving the world from the mutants for the president but then like at the end of it it's like okay cool and then like it resets and then you're saving the world for the president again and you know what i'm saying like in a different mm -hmm. spot so like or you're doing something ridiculous you're delivering a pizza you know like it could be anything so like yeah definitely more episodic but you could do a campaign, but I don't know. I just see it more ridiculous, off the wall, fun, like one um, one uh, adventure at a time. Could you, in this particular setup, would it be feasible for for um for someone to do a hex crawl with this kind of game? Yes, absolutely. That's like on my list is I want to do a hex crawl for sure. Because I have the uh, robot death jungle mm -hmm. um, record. I was going to, I'm going to one of these days hex crawl with Neon Lords with that. I think it would work pretty well. Yeah, I think, and give, given the, given the fact that You've you've got a lot of exploring when it comes to wastelands, so I'd say this would be a na a natural um, pick. Mm -hmm. Um, 
now I now I'm um, given the given the, some of the cra given some of the crazy um setups that that often happen with these sort of post-apocalyptic games. Has there been thought about adding some rulings on mutations, or has that not been um a priority? Yeah, so in the core rule book, there is three mutation tables. There's minor mutations, um, major mutations, and then mutated abilities. Like, essentially like X-Men type shit. Mm -hmm. But like, because like the uh, radioactiveness of the environment, let alone magical, like magic casting, like the chaos that magic comes from is extremely radioactive. So like uh there's a lot of minor minor mutations happening a lot. Mm -hmm. It's like uh in RoboCop where that guy like all of a sudden is like that sludgy mutant like th towards the end of the movie for no reason. Yeah. It's like that. Which I can de I can definitely go I can definitely go with that. Now how many pages are you shoot are you shooting for with this? So the goal is to cut me off at 252 pages. I like a good palindrome. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a feeling I'm going to be cutting stuff out because I can write and write and write and ridiculous stuff. So that's my problem is like, I'm going to have too much to put in it. And I have a feeling like the, the, uh, the main doc, like the main Google doc is like 95% done and it's, it's pretty beefy right now, mm -hmm. so, uh, but I think, mm -hmm. I think I can get it done. Yeah. And when it comes to now, um, given the fact that it's going to be at that page there now, I know this might sound a bit petty, but some people end up missing this. So it's one of those things I got to ask. Mm -hmm. Do you plan on putting in an index? A index? Mm, yeah, I could put an index in there. I was I didn't think about it because I've never really made a book before, but I guess that makes sense. Um, the other thing is, when it comes to the PDF version, are you planning on having that um, bookmarked? Yes, a hundred percent. I know, I know that's the kind of thing that seems obvious, but I've seen cases where some people forget to do it, and um, I had mentioned on Twitter a while a while back that if you do, if you do a large PDF. Um, with no book, with no bookmarks, you are probably going to be on my shit list. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Like it's bad enough. I hate PDFs as it is, so it's bad enough to try to scroll around to look for what you need, rather than just at the table of contents being like, "Oh, I want to go to weapons," and then just click the weapons, and then you're there. Like, mm -hmm. it's done saves time and saves headaches and then it you'd be more inclined to use those books for me it's a for me it's a case of there there are a few things that are more important than navigation and yeah. when when you have when you um have when you make navigation more complicated or have bad navigation um it takes the whole thing down with it yeah exactly so Oh, what's that game called? Ah, oh, I can't think of the name of it. It's like, damn it, this sucks. Well, anyway, so there's a game. Oh my god, it's like super famous too. That's the worst part about this. But like the book itself is built so weird. Like character creation, I couldn't even make a character because you had to go like in the beginning, then you had to go like into the end for parts of the character creation, then you had to go like back to the beginning so i just oh, oh no i don't remember the name of it damn it this sucks because like it's very very famous very popular book of course knowing how these things work you're gonna end up remembering just as soon as i hang up and then and then and then yell at me about it yeah i hate that like it's gonna bother me until i until i figure it out mm -hmm. uh, uh. but it's like so it's like it's like it's like futuristic sci-fi. You can be like a mech warrior if you wanted. Riffs? Yes. Yes, 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 ah, yes, yes, yes. Riffs. Yes. The, the game that's been my punching bag for almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Like, 
uh, yeah. So when I was like, I had a, a buddy who wanted to play, like he played riffs like forever ago. And he's like, mm-hmm. Oh, let's, let's play riffs. I'm going to DM riffs. Here's the book, make a character. And I was like, I couldn't even figure it out. I'm like, Holy shit. This is insane. Like, I can't, uh, I can't it's unbelievable. Necessarily, yeah, I can't necessarily say I blame you. Yeah, like, no thanks. And I mean, I mean, there's so many other good games too, like from that era that like Rifts is like pretty trash. Um, but. I like Rifts as a setting. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, as, absolutely. But when it comes to actually running the thing. And tr- and trying to get and trying to get the Palladium system to work, no. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I'll, what I'll always find funny is that for years they were very zealous about not having their system ad- be adapted to say D twenty, which honestly may have been for the best. I think D twenty would have been a poor fit. Um, right. And I I know some people might say, well, well, would it work with an earlier version of D twenty? No, not really. <laughs> the The problem is D20 has some quirks that just wouldn't be compatible. And then a few years ago, yeah. it gets adapted to Savage Worlds, which I'd say feels more natural than it does with the Palladium system. <laughs> Savage Worlds is meant to be of is meant for very pulpy kind of games, and well, I'd say that I'd say if something like Rifts qualifies. Oh yeah, for sure. That's what like. When you showed me the art for it, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm on board. And then, yeah, you start reading the book, and you're like, yeah, that's a, that's a pass on that. Well, when I did run it, I had a, I had a 12-page book of, um, of, stri- of, um, of house rules. And this, mm-hmm. is in cle- this was in violation to my policy on house ruling. Mm. Um. House ruling is a spice, not the main dish. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if you're ho- if I'm house ruling at that level, why am I still using that game? <laughs> exactly. You might, you might as well make your own or play play something different. Well, there's a ter- there's a term for the whole making your own based on based on that sort of thing. It's called a hack. That's true. That is true. But. Now you you now you currently have eleven days to go. You um you're cur- you're currently at eight thousand and change when it comes mm-hmm. when it comes to its current funding. Um, what would you be shooting for as far as a release window? So the release window is the book to be, the manuscript to be fully proofread and everything good to go by January, and then laid out from January to april april goes to the printers and then from the printers to the to the backers so i put august just because with covid going on and everything Mm -hmm. like it's not certain you know but we're gonna get this book out as fast as possible plus like that gives us a little bit of uh breathing room for the art to come in and then for like when it finally gets laid out that might take like a little bit more than anticipated. All right, I got gotcha. you. Especially if I like sit here and I lay it out, and I'm just like, "Nah, that's crap," and then just scrap it and redo it again. But I shouldn't. It should be all right. Um, the way you said that, it sounds like you're. It sounds like you can lean to be a bit of per- a perfectionist. Uh, I mean, not necessarily perfectionist. I just wanted to, like, if it's got the feel and it's got the vibe, then it's a hundred percent a go. But like, if it's just, if it's just not looking like how I want it to look, then I'm going to, I'm, I'm not interested. Which I can, but, I can definitely understand. I can definitely understand that. And either, either way, I'm pretty sure it'll turn, it'll turn out pretty good. And, um, definitely, definitely Gonzo is as, as Gonzo as I, um, would expect a game called neon Lords of the toxic wasteland to look like. Um, yeah. Now, if, now if, if only we if <laughs> if only we if if only I can if only I can get somebody to do a um to do a opening theme like it came out of Thunder or the Barbarian or something, <laughs> then, yeah, I think, then I think we'd be then I think everything would be um all set. Yeah, that would be amazing. Yeah. 
But with that in mind, I do want to mm. sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule to come all the way up to the sh up to the temple and enjoy the madness. Oh, no problem. I, I appreciate the uh, the the being on. You know, it's awesome. You get to chit chat about games and stuff. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I oh, often say I, around here, yeah. drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. Yeah. No, I mean, I'll definitely be back for sure. Mm -hmm. We could definitely talk about some ridiculous things. Mm -hmm. And of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk. Stay fucking frosty, everybody. <laughs>